Hello, welcome to ArtTutorialsOnline.com. My name is Paul Priestley, and today we're going to be drawing a pepper using coloured pencils. I'm going to show you how to do it. Yes, and it's going to be wonderful. So, why are we waiting? Let's make a start. I'm going to start by sketching in the outline, as you can see here. Now, I'm using a red um, pencil to do this one, and I'm just blocking it in very, very simply, trying to draw it nice and lightly. Now you'll notice this has been speeded up because if you, if I hadn't speeded it up you'd have been watching this for about an hour and a half so um, <clears throat> we're going to work from there. Now once I've got the outline in you can see I'm just blocking in the darker tones first. Now because they're darker tones they're cooler tones so I'm going to block in first of all with a purple. I'm just blocking it in very very lightly just suggesting the basic shapes so I can see where things are. Once I've done that, then I'm going to start blocking in a bit harder by pressing on a bit stronger, as you can see. And I'm not going to worry too much about blending this because I'm going to blend it all together with my burnisher later on. But I just want to establish where the dark tones are. So I'm going over, as you can see, with the purple. Once I've done that and established the really dark tones, I'm then going to take a crimson and then work on top of the purple. Now this will work because obviously crimson and uh, the purple are both share a bluish tone. Now I'm now establishing the very dark tones. Now whatever you do, do not use black because if you use black you ruin it. What you need to do is to use a very dark blue-grey colour if you can. Once you've done that, then you can see I'm just suggesting the light tones. And I'm produced, I'm using yellow because yellow is the opposite to purple on the colour wheel. So it makes the front of the pepper stand out from the back of the pepper. Once I've done that, I'm just going to block in then with orange, which again is the opposite of um, purple. I'm just blocking in the areas, all the light tones around the edge where the pepper's been chopped in half. You see? And then I'm just going over that with a warm red, something like a cadmium red. Just doing it very lightly to start with. Just blocking it in, just along that front edge. As strong as I can make it, you see. Once I've done that, then I'm just going to suggest it a bit stronger. Go on over it with a slightly darker red, as you can see. And just block it in. But yeah, I'm leaving little touches of the light red to show through. So you get this variation of tone of red you see makes it look good doesn't it you see okay now once we start on the um, sides of the pepper the sides of the pepper in shadow they're a darker tone but also they're a cooler tone and if i use a cooler red on here a crimson it's going to make them sink back so it will contrast with the lighter tones that i've used where the pepper has been sliced so i'm blocking in with blues first of all I'm then putting a little bit of white on top, which you can't really see. And then I'm working on top with my blue-grey again, you see. Just suggesting really dark tones in the blue-grey. Again, don't use black. Black will kill your drawing. Don't use black. Whatever you do, don't use black. Right. Um, going over now with purple. Again, just straight over the blue. And this is a beauty of coloured pencils. If you get good quality ones, they'll just go over each other like this, you see. So you can see it's all been suggested very cool bluish, purplish tones. Then work on top with the crimson. So you want a cool red now, not a warm red, cool red. And you can see we're beginning to develop that now. There we go. So nice cool red on top and we begin to suggest that reddish tone so blocking that in so it's nice and strong there we go i'm just going to go back now and lighten some of these other areas with the reds now you see the warm red that i've just put on there much much warmer red and you see how it contrasts with that cool little red of the edges you see just a little um, yellow ochre now on the, the pips and seeds in the pepper and then using my grey tone just to outline them. Again, not, don't use black. A um, little strong blue-grey, just suggesting edges, you see, just sharpening edges. Because edges 
Once they've been sharpened, we'll give your eye something to focus on. So you focus on the detail of the drawing. Okay, the other areas you don't want sharp edges. You just want the eye to focus on the sharp sections. And I'm going to fill in the areas, the, the depth of the pepper with some reddish tones. Again, use crimson, don't use a warm red. Um, once you've done that, you can see how the reds are contrasting each other. As you can see there in the note, it's interesting that the pepper's stem is green, the complete opposite to red, so the contrasting complementary colours. So make sure you don't outline it originally in red. It's got to be outlined in green, you see. Yeah, we're blocking in the greens. I'm using three different greens, as you can see. You see, three different tones of green. And you can see how the sharp edges give an emphasis to it. I'm going to go over and just suggest some edges on the other elements now as well. Just so you can see how the seeds are now beginning to stand out, begin to look a little bit stronger. Just sharpen a few of the edges again, you see. If you'll keep looking and comparing, contrasting all the time, see how your drawing works. You've got to bring it to life, you see, which makes the, the whole thing work really, really well. Right, burnishing now. You can see with the burnisher, the burnisher blends the colours together. You, you lose the marks that you've made when you did the drawing. Now, you don't have to do this. Um, in this particular case, the pepper lends itself to having a smoother sort of feel to it. But I'm having to work quite quickly here. You could spend a little bit more time smoothing this out if you want to do so. But you can leave the, the marks because the marks give a texture to your drawing, which would look really good. So, you know, it's up to you whether you want to burnish anything. But sometimes maybe a little burnishing here and there in contrast to the marks is a good idea. I'm just going to suggest a little bit of shadow underneath this so the thing doesn't look as though it's floating in the middle of space somewhere. And again, with the shadow, I'm using a cool tone. You see the blues and the purples. And I'm just putting that on very, very lightly to start with. Then I'll put the reds on top because you don't want the reds to look too dominant. You see, just put a little bit of purple on. I've even burnished the edge as well to make that a little softer because you don't want a sharp edge around the shadow. There we go, you see. So just burnishing away, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> a few little final details now. Now, basically what you've got to remember when you do your drawing is you've got to be confident. Don't try and copy exactly what you see. Try to interpret it. Use the colours. Blend the colours. Exaggerate the colours a little bit. Make the drawing your drawing. Because you don't want to, you know, vaguely just copies are not really going to work. You need to put your own individuality into the drawing. I'm just finishing off now with a little bit of burnishing just to finish off the edges. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the um, video. Um, the drawing's been a little bit quick, as I mentioned earlier on, just to cover everything we need to cover. Good luck with your drawing. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching ArtTutorialsOnline.com. If you've enjoyed the video, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you really enjoyed the video, then please share it with as many friends as you possibly can. Thank you very much. Cheers.